3CF Moreno Valley. The following program on KCAA is... Welcome to Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We are on KCAA, 1050 AM, 102.3 FM, 106.5 FM, every Thursday and Sunday afternoon. Uh, don't forget to also catch us on streaming. We are on Roku. We are on Amazon Fire. We are on the Android app. Look for Building Solid Foundations channel or catch us on your favorite podcast platform. Today, I am joined by... Jasmine Wilwa. She is the president of Note Assistance Program and co-host of the popular educational podcast, Naked Notes. Uh, she combines her deep inside knowledge of the secondary mortgage industry with a passion for building life-changing strategies for generational wealth. Her programs trained more than 800 executives, entrepreneurs, and small business owners for wealth building and portfolio management via First Position Mortgages. The podcast is listened to in 13 countries and boasts over 40,000 listeners. Welcome, Jasmine. It's great to have you on Building Solid Foundations. Yes, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Great. So you are um, a champion of helping people to build wealth. And tell, how did you get into that? What, what prompts you to do that as opposed to anything else you could possibly do while you're here? In other words, building wealth just for myself, right? <laughs> well, no, obviously you're helping other people build wealth. Right, yeah. So what got me into that segment of it, because, you know, most of us are out there to build wealth for ourselves. But That's when right. It made me take it out there to the next level. It's just really, you know, being someone from uh, a less privileged uh, background, right? So often that allows you to see both sides of it once you do get to the other side of it. Okay. And um, for those of us who have seen it, it's hard to forget. So I can attribute, you know, I'm originally from New York, Bronx, 1975 Bronx, I like to clarify. So for those of you guys who know. Uh, Fort Apache, I believe. Is is that what they called that over there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, you know, some tough times. So really, if I I really have to get down to the bottom of it, it's really inside of who I am to help people um, because of where I came from to help them get to the other side. In the community that I grew up with, there's a lot of talent. And so really, it's just, in my opinion, about getting access to the education. So that's really one of my biggest things. Okay. And and when you want to help... Um, you chose notes as the mm-hmm. main instrument to build wealth. There's a lot of ways to build wealth, obviously, yes. and and uh, people should probably pursue multiple different vehicles Agreed. to pursue wealth. Um, but what got you into the uh, note the note business? And and first of all, okay, before we go to that, let's stop and explain to people what the note what that means. All oh, right. Th- these yeah. are not Hallmark cards, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> right, right. Not love notes, although right. okay. uh, we do get pretty affectionate towards them sometimes <laughs> out there for those of us who understand. But yeah, um, yeah, there are many different ways. I started off as a stockbroker, um, financial advisor. I worked with Morgan Stanley Dean Witter out of New York City, a World Trade Center, um, and then out of San Francisco. So really, you are correct. You want to have multiple streams of income. For me, someone who... Um, has a form of ADHD, right? So I had to decide, it's time for you to focus on one. And so yeah. when I looked at notes, the opportunity that they provide, um, that's when I w- stuck to that one. And, and specifically because with notes, you don't necessarily have to have a lot of licenses, right? Okay. Um, it's an all cash game, but that's something, uh, for those of you who know me, my grandmother taught me this. She said, if you have a problem that money can solve, you don't have a problem at all. So mm-hmm. being raised that way, when I realized that the only real obstacle for note investing was the money, that's when I really was like, we gotta go gung-ho for this because not only is the money the only obstacle, but the money is really the biggest game here. So these banks make tremendous amount of profit. And if some of us had the same opportunities, every time we got up to bat to make these type of returns, right. our lives would change. So that's really where I, what made me focus on it. Okay, so let's define what a note is for okay. people. Because a lot of people don't know what it is, right? Right. So right. Tell, tell, us, tell us, when we say notes, what, what do you mean by that? So in particular, generally, when I say notes, uh, we're talking about promissory notes, right? So there are many, many different kinds of promissory notes. What has happened, and you guys can blame Bill Gates as far as I'm concerned for this, but what has happened recently is that subscription fee type of uh, program, right? So I'm old enough to remember when you'd go and buy the Word program or Excel program, and it'd be yours. (laughs) You take it, you remember that? You get a disk. Yeah, and you load it up, and it's yours. And and they didn't update it all the time for you. It it was just yours, and it worked as long as it worked, as long as you had that computer. Right, and then you maybe get another disk for the the download the updates on your own, but they were yours. Now, um, and what he did was he started that subscription base. So in order to get the Word and Excel, you had to pay a monthly fee. Yeah, it's the gym membership model. Right, and so that's everywhere. I mean, dang near at the gas station now with these pump prices going up, right? So that's right. the power of note investing in a promissory note is really what I want everyone to understand. Just knowing that alone will change your life whether you get into it. So really when I talk about notes, we're talking about promissory notes attached to, in my instance, real estate. So these are 
Uh, if you guys have a home out there, if you ever purchased a, mo a mortgage and purchased a home with a mortgage, excuse me, you got a letter in the mail saying, please send your payments elsewhere at some right. point, right? And so that's what I do. I teach you to be that person to buy someone's mortgage as an investment. And I found it to be very less competitive. Um, and then again, the returns are just so phenomenal. They can actually change your life. It's not a get rich quick, but over about two to three years, I've seen people fundamentally change their financial trajectory. Right. And so, so people don't understand it, the dollar bill that you, well, people use cards now, but if you still have any <laughs> cash in your pocket, right. if you look at the, the dollar bill, the 20, the five, whatever you have on it, it says, it doesn't say it's five dollars it says it's a note yes sir and what it is is that piece of paper that's got a picture of a dead president on it and probably some kind of a government building on the back of it that is a piece of paper that is a promise by the u.s federal government that that is worth the amount of money it says on it if you were to trade that for food for rent for gasoline for whatever you need you can trade that to anybody else. It says legal tender. That just means this is this is a tool you can use instead of gold or uh, right. something else, right? So we don't have to go and barter everything. I don't need to trade you three chickens for a tire, right? right. So so that's what that. It's a note, and and in and of itself, the paper has no value, but it represents a value behind it. And as long as you have that paper, it is worth that much money. So when you get a mortgage, so buy a car, you buy a car and you put some money down. And so let's say I put, you know, a portion of, I put a thousand dollars down on a car. I only own a thousand dollars of that $40,000 car, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and, and a bank somewhere, some lender somewhere owns $39,000 of that car. And every month I pay them five, 600 bucks a month until I pay that thing off, and get whatever that is. And maybe, you know, nowadays people are doing six, seven year car loans and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Yeah. Okay, but there's interest. In order to do that, they didn't just say, well, pay us the 39000 They said, no, actually what you're going to do is you're going to pay us about $50,000 total because we're going to charge you for the privilege of being able to drive a car before you could afford it. And we're going to buy the car for you, basically, and you're going to pay us back. You're going to have title to it. You're going to be responsible for it. You're going to insure it. But we are going to own the equity in that car. Right, and I was going to say, it's such a beautiful example you brought up for two reasons. One, in the mortgage industry, there are different types of paper. So just like that, that car piece of paper kind of represents what you see normally out there with a contract for deed or a lease option, things that you typically do not go to a bank to get. So a lot of private financiers will issue things like that. Right. And then when you go to a traditional bank, when you have a great credit and you can walk in and you know you, you shine like an, a great um, borrower should, then you can go into the bank and get a, a traditional mortgage. So the the... Example you gave with the car, that's the reason I love that is because when you deal with the contract for deeds, that's exactly what it is. Whereas the bank still holds their name on uh, the title as well. And so you don't get it, just like a car, until you make the last payment. Yeah, you don't get the pink slip. However, when you buy a mortgage, and this is because of Dodd-Frank and things like that all the time, consumer protection laws, we do put your name on it when you have a mortgage. So those people right. who do go to the bank versus maybe a credit union or a private investor, um, and get a actual mortgage, and their their name does get on title, and that that's what the foreclosure for is. If we have to actually get them off, that's right. And and it, and if your name's not on it, you can still file a lien, um, an encumbrance against the property if you want. And and then right, that's how you if you were to do a private lending for somebody's property, you would put a lien on it. Right, right, right. So you would be the lien now in, in essence. Right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So so that so that's what a note is. A note is a promise for some. It's an IOU, and is all it is. And so. Um, when we're talking about notes as in purchasing th things as investment vehicles, what you're doing is you're purchasing someone's IOU. And so instead yes. of the bank, instead of Wells Fargo or Bank of America holding the IOU, they sold it to someone else. And they always do. By the way, you may not know this. When you get a mortgage, banks commonly sell these things oh, to other within, people. Oh, within sometimes they, they, I've seen mortgages be sold at least twice before you've funded at the table. So right. So a lot of times they'll have people in the back on waiting to buy it, just waiting for the ink to dry. That's right. And so they'll sell it to someone else and that person is buying them. And what they want to do is they're putting their money into it as an investment vehicle because now, um, let's say you borrowed, um, you know, you borrowed $500,000 on the house you purchased. Um, you're going to pay much more than that $500,000 because of the interest and the amortization on right. it. And that's what they want is they'll, they'll gladly put that money up for you in order to get the additional money on top of that by the Usually, most people don't live in it till it's paid off. They'll sell it in between, but they'll make all these payments on interest, and then they'll sell the house and pay the note off. And the person that held the note 
pass that interest. That's their profit on it. So, they so let's, let's talk about that, actually. That's a great point. And uh, why do we get involved, right? First of all, you guys know that banks are heavy, heavy cash rich, right? You see them owning some of the most expensive uh, the real estate. Biggest, biggest buildings in town are insurance companies and banks. Right, and yeah. insurance companies love notes too. You may only know or not. They are some yeah. of the biggest clients for notes. So first of all, <coughs> excuse me, the, the first task was to, uh, was to uncover what are the tools that these banks are using to become so profitable and how do I get access to it, right? Right. And so one thing I love that you brought up is the profit, right? There's tons of profit in these. If you guys, again, for those who have purchased a, a home with a mortgage before, you signed something, and I believe they changed the name now, but something called the TILA, the Truth in Lending, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, and so with that said, if you just pull it out and look, it'll tell you, and I'll use some basic numbers, but if you borrow 100000 at X amount of rate for 15 to 30 years, you're going to end up paying 250 to 300000 when it's all said and done. So when you sure. do the math on that, you're doing it. These guys, every time they write a mortgage, it's 200 to 300% return That's baked right. in there. So let's resonate again. While we're getting 0.03%, that's right. <laughs> or while we're struggling to get, you know, a seven percent and take an extra risk, these guys have secured real estate notes by real estate that are giving them two to three hundred percent returns if they decide to hold on to them. And that's why banks are doing so well. We're gonna have to take a short break. Uh, we're talking to. Um, we're talking to Jasmine Wilwa, and she is a note investor, and she teaches people how to use notes in order to build wealth. And we're just scratching the surface. We're going to get deeper into this when we come back from this break. This is Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We'll be right back after this. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing, and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Choose power today and help us create a cleaner planet. Over the past years, utility prices have rapidly increased. Power provides home energy solutions that would save money. Power is the world's first virtual solar company that aims to adopt sustainable energy worldwide. Our company delivers low cost, clean, and reliable energy solutions. The solar investment allows you to become eligible for an income tax credit. The solar investment is a great way to provide long-term value. Power is the first solar company that reduces carbon footprint for a cleaner environment. Power is experienced and one of the fastest growing solar companies in the United States which provide the best solutions according to your needs. Call today for your free solar consultation. Join us as one of our ambassadors and earn $1,000. Earn $1,000 when the installation is completed. Free sign up at www.power.com slash marie.wait slash ambassador. Feel good about what powers your life. Marie Wait, your solar consultant. 9513785316 Enjoy your life with solar.com Real men of real estate Men of real estate radio show here on KCAA Oats mortgages can be purchased All of us want to live in thriving communities Basically go to the radio station KCAA radio.com You can find us on your dial at 102.3 FM 10:50 AM as well as 106.5 FM. Are you a real estate investor looking for a new opportunity in one of the top tourist destinations in the world? Look no further. Welcome to Punta Cana. Perla Bahia is a private resort style community in Punta Cana that consists of modern condos, custom villas, and various commercial amenities. So if you're interested in learning more or joining us on one of our monthly investment tours, don't hesitate to contact me today at 909-494-2280.
Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We are with Jasmine Wilwa today. We have been talking about notes and describing what they are. Um, before we uh, went to the break, uh, we were discussing um, kind of the, the nature of notes and what how banks make their money. Banks are built around um, essentially taking people's money they deposit and then using that to loan to other people and creating notes out of that and making then money on top of that. Uh, banks do very good at it. Insurance companies do well at it. And you'll find that the people that um, are heavy into notes make a lot of money. For example, a lot of the, uh, the car makers, they make more money on the car loans than they make on manufacturing the cars. That's okay. why Hyundai has their own financing. That's why GM has GMAC, their own financing. Um, they make money on these. Toyota has their own financing uh, because the money is in the financing. And, and that's what the notes are about. So as we get into discussing um, how notes work, um, one thing that um, one thing you mentioned was the two to three hundred percent return on these things because of Amer it's not as simple as well the interest rate was eight percent the interest rate was five percent the interest rate was three and a half percent there's amortization so you're basically paying interest on the interest is what you're doing as you yeah. go through the life of the loan and if you ever look at the um, graph of how payments work and you look at the ratio of interest to principal early in the loan versus late Early in the loan, 90% of your payment is interest, and only 10% of that's going to um, reducing your principal. So it's actually yeah, it's a, it's, it's, that's a fun fact I like to call it. the first 10 years. So just think about it. I'm loving banks love to hold notes. If you really just start thinking about strategy, right? They'll be happy to hold a note from one, two, three, anywhere up to 10 years. But as that 10th year starts coming, it's time, it. to, it's time to get rid of it. Yeah. And you just think about all the money they make on the points on the front. That's right. right. Then it's just really all interest they're collecting those first ten years. Once that tenth year passes, then you start chipping away at the principal, and that's when it starts leaning towards your favor. And that's also why the refinance finance business is pushed so hard because mm, if people right. pay for reset. five years on a loan and then we we refi, we reset, we're back to one again. Yes. So we're back to paying all the interest again, and we never really bite into that principal, which is why a lot of people never get their homes paid off. And sometimes it may not be necessary, right? I mean, yeah. like you said, the average uh, American holds the, uh, the home for about five to eight years. So at the end of the day, you know, especially with the way equity works in America, that you could still get creative and leverage and work your way to get some capital yep. gains out of it. So again, what's happening is that we are changing as a society about what we need. We're no longer staying in homes That's <laughs> right. forever. And so the products are coming out to match that. That's right. So so now we get into kind of what you do, which is you you help people to become the bank. Yes. Instead of paying Wells Fargo or Bank of America or Chase every month, you pay Jasmine every month because Jasmine bought the note from somebody who bought it from Chase. Yes. Pretty much is how that works. Mm -hmm. And so now she buys the note and when you make the payment, it's going to her. And here's what's great about that. When you when Bank of America owns your note and you get in any mm -hmm. kind of trouble whatsoever, you get laid off or something, good luck trying to call somebody there and talk to them and explain your situation and get any kind they of don't even care. Have yeah, they, they don't know it's you, yeah, you're just a number <laughs> and they're just somebody in a cube somewhere, right? When you call Jasmine, she's a human being. And yes. she says, you know what? I understand that, so here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna work with you. And then maybe we give you a reduction for a few months while you get on your feet, and then we'll catch that up later or something like that. Uh, you're working with a person that can work with you on things. So so tell us how um, how that works for you. You obviously buy a note. Where, first, where, where do you buy a note from? I, <laughs> I, don't go, I, I don't go on Amazon and buy a note, right? <laughs> It's so funny you say that, um, and so many great points. Where should I start? So first of all, as far as buying a note, you will be surprised. Um, you know, just like everything in life, right? You. This is the example I always use, but no, I don't have a yellow Lamborghini. But if you That's ever right. bought a yellow Lamborghini, all of a sudden you would see them every five minutes when you're driving outside, right? That's right. That's right. So same thing about notes. If you're not aware of the industry, then it's like, where do I even find out about them? But once you get in, you start realizing they're all around us. That's right. So. Um, some of the places that I prefer to get banks from, uh, sorry, notes from is from banks because that's my background. So that's probably one of the hardest places to break into okay. because it's a very close-knit society, obviously. 
But and, but coming out of GMAC, Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, you say, have connections. Right. Right. So that's when I woke up and realized that I need to be the one that started this program for the average lame person because otherwise you're not getting in and these people have no desire to share. The type of money that they're making doesn't require them or even it costs them to think that they should bring it down and bring that type of education. And then a lot of people just come from a place of scarcity, right? Yeah. So I come from a place of abundance. So those people just naturally are not going to share their contacts. You join my community. I'm an open open book. My cuff's open to you, and I'm going to share everybody, all my contacts with you because that's what's important. Um, but what I, one of the things that you, you brought up that was so, so just kind of keen is that, yes, I worked for General Motors, um, and they even went into home loans, right? So that's when you right. talked about how that's GM right. is a – they make cars, but that's not the most profitable thing they do. No. They, at this point, do that – they're a finance company, first and foremost. Right. They yes. build cars because that's what you guys, us American, like them to do, and it's, it puts on a good face for them. It brings it's, back nostalgia. Well, you, have to have we, a, you have to have a product to finance, <laughs> right? So we make something that you can then borrow <laughs> money to get. Right. That's right. But it's more of a, in my opinion, it's more of a, that's, we love GM cars, right? And yeah. so we have to have a product to finance, more importantly. But where they make them real money, they started noticing it was in the paper, in the notes. So they started sure. with the car notes. Next thing you know, they're GMAC homecomings, which is where I was, and I ran a $380 million portfolio of, of just loans, that's right. right? And it's like, how do we get these people, meaning the borrowers, those who are either semi-performing, meaning missing payments, to get back or even get people back and, and to reinstate or have them keep their home. So that experience over the five years of working with General Motors, it really afforded me the opportunity to look at loans from a volume standpoint and then back it up and look at it from a 30,000 foot view and see it about a portfolio, how you run a portfolio of American mortgages, right? There are people behind, as you mentioned, that live in these loans. So one thing I want to touch upon is what we um, pride ourselves on and we have a, a saying called make money and go to heaven. Okay. So that is what we do here. Uh, we want to, I want to breed that next generation of banks, um, albeit mostly private, but banks that want to make money. So we don't want to be ashamed of making that type of money, but we want to also go to heaven making it. So, so you're not coming from the, um, the, the money is, is the root of all evil philosophy? I'm not. I'm definitely a, a gecko, a Gordon Gecko fan, but I also understand that gecko, you know, that, that's, that time is dead. For those of you who know Wall Street out there and love Michael Douglas, right? I understand that, um, you know, remember greed is good. Yeah. But well and, and actually the, the, the quote that originally came from yes, the Bible on that is the love of money is the root of all evil. There right. You know. It had to do so if if you love money what I've learned is people that love money never have enough of it. Okay. That they, they, they never do well at it. Right. They're always broke. Um, they're always looking for angles, they're always scamming because they love the money. But if they understand money's a tool. Yes. Just like the well, money is basically a note. It's a version. It's, it's, it's a tool that we use to exchange for things we'd rather have, right? It's a form of exchange. It's just a for, universal form of exchange we all accept. And it's just a tool. And by in and of itself, it's really got no real value. As an economics major, I think one of the things that, that helps me out a lot, for those of you who um, just enjoy economics, one of the things that it taught me is just that. is that money is just a commodity. It's no more than a bottle of water, the apple, the oranges. It's just a matter of that, like he mentioned earlier, Steve, was that we have the, the unique thing about this promissory note is that we have two consenting adults. That's why every contract in America, one thing that has to be there is an 18-year-old, someone who consents. So once you have two people of sound mind and body and they agree on the value of something, you're off to the races. You have yourself right. a deal. And so that's what we're doing is we're interjecting ourselves. So instead of having to go out and originate in the loans, right, and go through all that work, wait till the hard work is done, jump in and try to buy and have access to the same tools that these guys have. But this paper, um, it, it just requires a lot less of physical activity and so in that, in the sense of its own, you're going to see your profits and be able to kind of scale it out much bigger. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of work to go through the process of finding, um, mm -hmm. matching a borrower with a product yes, or sir. a commodity and then qualifying them. That's a lot of work, you know. Let's look at your W-2s and your tax histories and you look at, you know, your all this by kind time, of stuff. By the time a lot we get of work. involved... It's all done. It's at, We can see who you are. You can't come in and tell me no matter what your credit score says. I don't mm -hmm. care because it tells me right here whether you've been paying your mortgage. And it's already time. a done deal. So yeah. and, and and whoever was at that bank already did all that work for mm -hmm. you. And, figure, and okay, the truth you, is there now. The bank's either being a good bank, right, yeah. being good steward by you and, and taking your calls and helping you through hardship and understanding things, putting the, the money where you want it to when you send it in, mm -hmm. or not. And you are either a good bar borrower, as you profess at the sitting down, and you're able to make your payments on time with that clockwork, or you know, you're know tripping up a little bit because of times have, you know, hard times have come. I do mm -hmm. believe that what's important is that, like you said, if we use the proper money, so most of our 70% of the, the deals that we do are done with people's retirement accounts, so self-directed IRA money. Okay. So the difference there is just like you said, you don't have the same pressure. When something happens with you in your house, your mortgage is owned by 
a NAP Nation member, if you will, or an investor that we raise, then you do have that level of compassion. You do have no longer that sense of urgency. What kills me about Wall Street when you look at Blackstone and all these people who are really just taking over the, the blemish of the market, they will have a report that says they made, you name it, 120% return. Head to a roll because they're supposed to make 130. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a greed based, yeah, spread. And it's just numbers you're reporting to stockholders. But for us, you know, we were supposed to make a 65% return, but now we're making a 30% return. I think we're all going to be okay, especially in our self directed IRA, tax shelter. So we have a different level of, um, of desire. And like you said, we're not in love with the money, we're in love with the lifestyle that it provides for us. That's right, yeah, and and and, and the security that it gives you. Because as mm -hmm. you said, if you, if if your problems can be solved by money, it's just a matter of when. Let's just give the money, and we solve the problem. <laughs> that's right? out there, right? Yeah, that's, that, and, and that's that's where the security comes from. Yes, sir. Uh, and and it's not to say that if you have money, you have no more problems. That's not I'm saying at not all. all. Because there are some problems that money doesn't solve, like health issues and those well, kind of things. Well, that's what but. my grandmother was saying to me. So I grew up in a yeah. town called Poway. For those of you who are familiar with Cal uh, yeah. California, right next to Rancho Santa Fe, so. That's why it really resonated to me so much because I grew up around some very wealthy people. But the problems they had, they could not solve by money. They could not throw money at it when you're talking about health and family things. Um, yeah. And then for us, you know, we had great health and the problems we had were surrounded by money. So That's right. And, yeah. that, and those are much easier problems to Believe deal with. Believe it or not. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and you find out that on a, on a scale, when you compare things, um, those are, your money problems are lower priority problems because the, the wealthiest person in the world would give it all up at the, the day that they're di they're diagnosed with two months to live. Oh, any of those right. circumstances, yeah. So yeah. just being grateful, I think, is one of the main things that our community en encompasses, and then we extrapolate that out in everything we do, hence the term of making money and go to heaven, because we want to get rid of any type of shame that comes with... <laughs> right, and that's, yeah, get past that, that negative mindset. We're going to have to take another short break. When we come back, I want to get into the idea of the secured versus non-secured. We'll talk about what that means for people. I'm talking to uh, Jasmine Wilwall. We're talking about notes today on building solid foundations. This this is Steve Matley. We'll be right back after this. FireUp Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. FireUp Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Estate. Men of Real Estate Radio Show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically, go to the radio station KCAARadio.com. You can find us on your dial at 102.3 FM, 1050 AM, as well as 106.5 FM. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, Marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 551 1350 and ask for Ken. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951 551 1350 and ask for Ken.
Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Matley. I'm talking today with Jasmine Wilwa. We have been discussing notes and investing in notes and kind of really what the value of, of money and cash is. And when we left off, I did tell you we we're going to get into what secured versus non-secured notes mean. And, and all debt, anything that's owed is either secured or it's unsecured. So if I loan you, you say, can you give me a hundred bucks and I give you a hundred bucks, that is not secured. Right. That's I may never see that again. And I really have, other than chasing you down and breaking your knees, I got no way of enforcing that, it's right? It, right? It is what it is, right, yeah. And I'm not gonna do that, by the way. So that's right, not- you have to make it. decisions for yourself. Here's what's interesting about that question, secured or unsecured. Um, securing your debt is probably the most safest way for you to get involved in the smartest way. Uh, but I, as, as you know, I do a lot of teaching and one of my, my passions is to make sure I educate people from high school on up about uh, the creativity and the profit and debt. And so I work with a, a project, a, a young lady named Kirsten who runs the Normalization Project, right? And what I love about it is that she started off from when she was in high school, just giving out loans to people, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so before she even knew like the power of loans, like from a, 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 a business standpoint or a scientific standpoint, she started off just leveraging and giving out small loans to people. So those would be like the unsecured, like he mentioned. You get um, to, you, you got, you're putting your trust in them. You're putting trust. You're going to know the people. And as she got more mature, she started maybe putting contracts behind them, right? That's right. But still unsecured. Then when she ran into me, she's like, wow, I've been doing this forever. You mean I can actually get loans secured by homes? This is amazing. Mm -hmm. So some of you out there have actually already really touched the surface of this already, right? You've already given out loans to family members. What we want to do is get you on a professional standpoint, and that's what we teach, right? Is how to get the contracts out there and whether it's going to be secure or unsecured. I have friends that are just starting a credit card debt company. These guys make a tremendous amount of money servicing credit card debt. Yeah, and, and, and credit cards um, have very higher interest rates. Right, you know, but the money's there, They're yeah. pushing the usury rate, really. They're getting up there, right? <laughs> they are, right. It's crazy rates, you know, 20 plus percent. Um, but the reason is because it's unsecured. The risk involved, right? Yeah. So, so that's my point is that there's so much profit and debt. One thing we have to understand is how do we get on the other side and see how the bank's doing this and why they're doing it. It's a necessary product. So I'm not here. You're never going to hear me telling you don't use debt, don't use this credit card. Yeah, there are better ways to use them. That's not what I teach. I'm going to teach you good debt versus bad debt from the standpoint of what it's like to be a borrower and then how you can consider becoming a creditor yourself. Because that's what I look at debt, good debt versus bad debt means. It means am I actually the one receiving the, the monthly payments mm -hmm. <laughs> or am I the one always giving out the monthly payments, right? And so I can give out monthly payments. There's a lot of things I'm going to be teaching in Pennsylvania about the buy now, pay later thing that you guys see online now, right? So a lot okay. of the kids are loving that buy now, pay later. Just another creative form of debt. So if we start thinking about what the society needs to meet their credit, or sorry, their debt needs, then we, some of us can get out there and start creating as well. That's right. It's amazing. Be right. in the bank. Yeah, and, and, and all debt essentially boils down to buy now and pay later. That's because <laughs> most right. so so for a house, um, it's unlikely that that most people are going to save up enough money in a reasonable amount of time to have seven hundred thousand dollars to go buy a house with. Yes, sir. Take a long time to save that kind of money up when you still have to live. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you got two incomes, uh, so because of that, you you would be in your nineties probably before you got to that point, and you would never buy it. Instead, somebody comes up and says, look, we'll spot you the money. Right. You go ahead and buy the house. Now, they get the interest. You get the benefit of appreciation. They get the benefit of the interest because you're going to pay them for them doing you that service of providing you the money so you can live in a house now instead of decades from now when you finally can afford it. Right. Now, here's a caveat, right? Because one of the things that, he, that you said, Steve, was that they get to keep the appreciation. So that is when you have a borrower who's performing the whole time. That's Banks right. win even more, believe it or not, when something goes sour. Because right? then they get the appreciation. Right. So then they get that appreciation on top of the interest that they've been receiving for the time. So one of the biggest secrets about banks um, that I, I love sharing, which is not, you know, doesn't get win me favors in the industry. But the bottom line is that we make even more money when a recession and times are bad. And so people will say to us, oh, Jasmine, what do you expect with the recession coming up? And what I expect is for us to have more product. That's right. What I expect is, you know, unfortunately, people are not going to be able to meet their um, obligations, and then they're going to come down as form as non-performing notes. So we're buying performing notes as well as non-performing notes. And that sometimes shocks people. They're like, you would buy a note from a bank where someone hasn't paid in over 10 years? I do it every day. But, but that's where they, they didn't 
pay the bank because the the bank they probably the bank doesn't probably answer the phone when they call or anything like that. A lot of that they're and not really concerned. So it's you get a note. non-performing note, and now you get to go talk to that person and say, "Listen, I don't want to throw you out of the house. So let's talk about how to keep you in the house." And so you were paying. It looks like you were paying, you know, four thousand dollars a month. What if we brought that down to three thousand dollars a month? Could you afford that? And we'll put you on a new program. And you have the ability to work all that out because you now own that yes, debt. Sir. And a lot of times people will be so relieved because they keep expecting that letter to come through that says you're out. Mm-hmm. And they're they're and dreading it. Fear that they're dreading in. it. That's what I remember distinctly about 2008 when that happened. I mean, just the fear that a lot of Americans had to go through. And realistically. I don't want to say it wasn't necessarily a big deal, but we made it bigger than it was. Like, yeah. realistically, we all buy homes, we move in and out of them. We, this is just a thing that we do as Americans. We never stay in the same house for the rest of our lives, right? That's right. So if we can soften that blow when things go wrong in contracts, not everyone can keep every, not every contract is going to be seen to the end. That's just a fact, right? right? So what do we do with those people who, because of unfortunate circumstances, are not able to meet it? We should be able to give them cash for keys, help them get out of this yeah. in very respectable way with dignity so they can go like every other America and rise from these ashes and try it again later. This is never, in the, in the beginning, at least in the, in the back in the day, it was almost like a death sentence. We had so much guilt with us losing a house. And the reality is a lot of these products were just not really built for us to keep for that long anyway. Right. So so you mentioned a, a term there that people may or may not be familiar with, the cash for keys. Okay. And so so I gave the example of you negotiated and someone you reduced their if they can their, their mortgage by twenty five percent. But if they can't afford anything, then that cash for keys. So explain what that cash for keys is. So that's our answer to again being not being a big big bad bank. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey, First thing I'll tell you is you never know what condition it's going to be. When you get a, a note that has been paid for six plus years, a lot of time it's abandoned. A okay. lot of times in really, really poor condition because if they can't pay the mortgage, it's hard for them to keep no the water on, yeah. maintenance. And so really, again, someone coming from that background, okay, knowing what it's like. Sometimes you are doing that person a favor by relieving that albatross off their back, right, and getting them into something that they can afford later and doing something that's right for them. There's a time when there's a lot of predatory lending going mm-hmm. on. And so what I like to do, what I call myself doing is going in, and if they can't afford it, it's like, hey, let's give you some money so you can afford to move with dignity. It's not the sheriff's coming and knocking on the door and the neighbor's looking at you and you, again, taking a 10-year worth of burden with you. You're going to get past this like this was a business decision that didn't work out, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay? Exactly. And then you're going to go and start all over, and maybe three to five years you're going to get another opportunity, but this time you would have learned, and maybe you're going to keep your home. And that, to me, is the biggest thing that's missing from this whole equation right now is that a lot of cultures, a lot of people... Um, they just don't have that experience on how to deal with the product, right? right? They didn't have generations of people learning how to pay mortgages on time and explain to them what it is. So some people are going to leave, you know, a couple tries at it. Right. And the nice thing about the cash for keys is um, it, trying to go through an eviction process is expensive and messy, especially if you're here in a state like California. Sure. Some states, maybe not so much, but here in California, it, it's really a tricky deal. But if you can talk to people, and again, with to save their dignities. They're not yeah. getting dragged out by the sheriff and they're not being embarrassed. Is you can say, look, you move, you know, within the next, you know, 30 days. 30, you choose the day. Days, yeah. Well, exactly. you know, we'll pay $2,000 of moving expenses for a van to come, load everything up, take it wherever you want it. I'll get you your deposit and your first month's rent and, and your utility, all your utilities and stuff. So you'll be set up to move and for 30 days you'll have no financial issues. And then you're on, from there you're on your own, but you're in a more affordable place for you. And when you think about it, the money that is in, and for those of you guys who are going, can we still make money doing that? Yes. Yes. The amount. Because, yeah. because you'll, it's, it's cost, a, what, a third of what it costs to evict them. First of all, right. More importantly, it's, it's just a frag. You're actually saving money doing that. Yes. Um, but really, the, the profit is, is so ingrained in these, right? So in that case, we're actually getting the, the house back. So here's the other trick, right? When we get these loans, we're the one living and maintaining the home for the bank, especially yeah. if, in the end, it goes back to the bank. <laughs> so right. we're doing the bank a favor by staying in at least having it in a livable condition That's right. while we're doing it. So at this point, your house is appreciating, right, That's because right. of the value you're putting into the neighborhood, because you're mowing the lawn, because you're keeping on maintenance, okay? So all that is going in as a value add, and either you're going to get it at the end or the bank's going to get it. But what I want you to understand is that the bank's, we appreciate whether they show you or not, and that's why we can't want them to be different and make money go ahead, but they should appreciate, and they do appreciate the fact that you're in it while they're working through this, because otherwise, you know what happens. It can get um, vandalized. Uh, squatters. Squat- yeah. The squatters then, are impossible to get out. And then our costs go through the roof. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, 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 and when you have the squatters and utilities are all turned off, then you have the problem of the fires because people try to set fires real, inside the house. Real quick. <laughs> yeah, it's a real <laughs> issue, yeah. Yeah, and, and or, you know, it, you get squatters that come in and then it becomes uh, all their friends show up too. Yeah, some of them, they just move. I have one in uh, New York where they just feel like they took possession. They're like, this is my house. And, and, and then trying to get them out. Sometimes uh, it's very tricky both legally but also they can get violent. Right, so you always want to make sure you do things right. So we just follow everything by by law and the Consumer Protection Bureau and all that good stuff. But you always want to let, we believe in agency. So one thing I will uh, tell you also is that we believe in uh, delegation with a passion over here. And in this industry, you really want to get that done. Because just like you said, it's going to be an emotional time for both of you if you have not dissected, taken your emotions out of it, which is what we teach here as well. Right, right. And and again, there's there's right ways to do things and wrong ways to do things. And, And if you also keep in mind, um, yes, it's a note, and yes, it's it's real estate, but it's also human beings. Yes, you're dealing with people, and yes. I, I think that ties into your make money and go to heaven thing. Right. We, you know, we, we don't just throw people out on the street and and turn them into homeless people living under a bridge. Just because we want to make some yeah, money yeah. and profit, and that's the part that kills me is that for us. We know we are comfortable at home. Okay, this is for our retirement. This is so we can, you know, pay for weddings, go on extra vacations, just yeah. increase our lifestyle. So keeping that in mind, and then understanding the flip side of it, we're actually having someone who's really having a, you know, and they're going to move, and their their kids don't want to change schools, and all the stuff that goes, that goes on with, with it. That, yeah. Right. So we're going to take another break. We're going to come back and wrap this up. And I've got, um, I think, the most important question to uh, give to you in the last segment, which is. Uh, can we really make money doing this? And that's going to be in our wrap-up segment. This is Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Matley, and we'll be right back after this. Choose power today and help us create a cleaner planet. Over the past years, utility prices have rapidly increased. Power provides home energy solutions that would save money. Power is the world's first virtual solar company that aims to adopt sustainable energy worldwide. Our company delivers low cost, clean, and reliable energy solutions. The solar investment allows you to become eligible for an income tax credit. The solar investment is a great way to provide long-term value. Power is the first solar company that reduces carbon footprint for a cleaner environment. Power is experienced and one of the fastest growing solar companies in the United States which provide the best solutions according to your needs. Call today for your free solar consultation. Join us as one of our ambassadors and earn $1,000. Earn $1,000 when the installation is completed. Free sign up at www.power.com slash marie.wait slash ambassador. Feel good about what powers your life. Marie Wait, your solar consultant. 9513785316. Enjoy your life with solar.com. Real men of real estate. Men of real estate radio show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically, go to the radio station KCAA radio.com. You can find us on your dial at 102.3 FM, 1050 AM as well as 106.5 FM. Are you a real estate investor looking for a new opportunity in one of the top tourist destinations in the world? Look no further. Welcome to Punta Cana. Perla Bahia is a private resort style community in Punta Cana that consists of modern condos, custom villas, and various commercial amenities. So if you're interested in learning more or joining us on one of our monthly investment tours, don't hesitate to contact me today at 909-494-2280. Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations. This is your host, Steve Matley. I'm talking today with Jasmine Wilwa. We've been talking about uh, notes and investing through that. If you hear anything that interested you and you maybe want to ask some questions of Jasmine, uh, you can get hold of her. You can call her at 855-541-6683, 855-541-6683. If you're driving, I'm going to repeat that at the end of the show here. Or you can email her at apps, A-P-P-T-S, which is appointments, short for appointments, A-P-P-T-S at noteassistanceprogram.com. That's noteassistanceprogram.com. All one word, no spaces, no capitals, no punctuation. All apps at APPTS at notesassistanceprogram.com. So, Jasmine, 
we've talked about what notes are, how it works, some of the techniques, uh, the philosophies behind it. How do people get involved? And, and you keep mentioning that banks make a lot of money. How do, can people make money at this thing? Yeah, 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 tremendous amounts. Um, what I will tell you that this is a game of patience. Okay, so unlike the uh, stock so, market. So kind of like doctor's office. <laughs> oh, different kind of patience. Yeah, 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 not kind of patience. That. Okay. It's a game of uh, patience muscle that you have to exercise because, uh, as mentioned, we're dealing with people in the homes and things like that. So that's one of the biggest things I teach people. But there's money in here. Um, outside of just saying, look around at the banks, I would like to tell you how you, how you can get involved. So you can start buying notes on your own. You can even create notes, right? So some of you who have real estate out there and you're the landlord, you might be sick and tired of getting those calls. This would be a great way. Um, it's something we teach you how to convert all of your rentals into uh, contract for deeds or mortgages, and therefore they don't get to call you every time something breaks, um, and you still have. So, so your so your your renters can become owners. And you also giving yeah the opportunity to give them home ownership, right? Okay. And what you're going to find again, based on the statistics we told you, <coughs> excuse me, you're really not giving them that much because again. People usually only stay in homes about five to ten years, That's so right. you will probably end up getting it back, or they will refinance out and get get um, give you a full payoff. So lots of ways to make money as far as either creating them yourself. What we do, as mentioned, is we like to buy them either from banks or hedge funds, um, or just individuals. There's a lot of private sellers out there. This note business has been going on since the beginning of time. So um, there are doctors. I have a doctor friend in Arkansas. He makes more money uh, in his note portfolio than he does as a surgeon, and he's a good surgeon, right? And That's so. Right. A lot of people um, know about this opportunity, and these are where you can get them from private sellers as well. But what I want to tell you is that you want to start thinking about the fact that a lot of these loans were originated in the past. And so whatever the home was worth at that time, right, is really what that loan is going to be. And we are offering our purchase price based on the debt, not on the current value of the home. So really, if you want to think about how we're making money, that is really where we're taking it out of. It's that equity spread of when the loan was created, right? Loans created 10 years ago. We all know what happened over the past three years in America. Homes went up about 70% That's right. across um, the state. So that's where we're slowly taking the money from, whether it's from a form of us getting payments <laughs> from them, and we're slowly getting that dip by dip, and or we're going to do that by foreclosing on someone um, and getting the home and then selling it out. And we like to sell them to, to uh, flippers because we don't want to do all that work, right? right? So we're able to offer, give you some quick numbers. On average... When we buy a note, we're in that asset about 33 cents on the dollar of the after repair value. Okay. When you guys are out there and you know about all those big flipping formula guys or big shows that they tell you about how they can flip homes and everything. So the thing that's consistent about those guys, they tell you if you can find a home at 50, 60 cents on the dollar, you got yourself a deal. All right. So. And you're getting 33 cents on the dollar. Let's do the math. By the time we're finished with the note and we foreclose, we're in at 33 cents. The question is, do we want to do all the work like the young kids and flip and, and, and get it to the ARV? Or do you want to hand that to a flipper and sometimes make about the same money with less work? Right. Win a 33, sell it to you for 60, call the day and go do it again. So hopefully that put a visual on how to make money. What I can tell you this, that, that this is very less labor intensive than traditional means of tax investing, flipping, renting uh, to own another thing. But on the same token, there is, you know, some work you have to do. You have to take phone calls. You want to get trained properly. And so that's what we do with the Note Assistance Program. You can reach us there. We do hands-on training uh, coupled with online training and focus around making money and going to heaven. If you do not have the time, but you want to get involved with the fun and the profits, uh, but you, don't, you can't see yourself you know, learning a new trick, we have launched a $50 million fund. Uh, we just got finished speaking to our attorney, and so it's going to be for accredited investors only. It's a Make Money and Go to Heaven Fund 1. <laughs> okay. Um, it's going to be all um, uh, securitized by uh, promissory notes, first position, and real estate based. And um, we are looking, it's the credit investors, only $200,000 minimum to get involved. So that's going to be okay. the most passive way for you to get involved and take advantage of some of those okay. profits. So people don't know what a fund is. A fund is, instead of actually going out and buying the real estate or buying the note, you contribute money. So uh, a lot of people with a small amount of money come together and have a large amount of money together. And that amount of money then can then go buy the notes. So you're, notes. You're, you're basically in a club, a group of people that together are buying notes. So say just like at your work, you have a 401k and together you guys all are in a mutual fund together. It, like it's the same program. thing, right? Yeah. So it's the same idea. And so that, that's what a fund is. And, and you'll make um, generally close to, but a little less than if you did it yourself because you have to pay the fund manager doesn't do this for free. They, right. they, they're, they're doing a, a valuable service for you, doing all the work. And so the great thing here is you don't have to go do the phone calls. You don't need to do the research. You don't need to do any of the foreclosures. You just put write a check and then eventually get a check. And that's that's and that's the way that our my company does. We we do um, 
syndicated projects. Oh, okay, wonderful. Yeah, so and, and, so, yeah and so yeah, and so and so we like that. We always tell people that um, we're motivated. You have to take the negatives and turn them into positives. So we're motivated by two things: laziness and greed. Meaning, what what's the most <laughs> amount of money for the least amount of effort we can do legally, right? And and I say that flippantly because, but it's true. Right, right. I don't want toilets, tenants, and trash. I don't want to go to Home Depot and do all this work. I, I did all that in my youth. I did the fixes. And in my case, you may not even want to feel the call from an attorney to say yes, right. we're ready to foreclose. And there, there's foreclose. legal work to do on other things. And so if you can just write the check and give it to somebody you know, like and trust, Incredible. and they will manage that for you. And then when it makes a profit, they will send you your money plus the profit back. That's the easiest way to go. And you get to go do whatever it is you'd rather do with that time and effort. Right. And what I like to say about that model is that, one, I highly recommend that if you do get involved with a fund, you at least know about the product that they're using. So right. for us and for him, for, for example, you said you have a uh, syndicated product as well. Sounds like the more traditional products flipping. So know about flip. Have done at least one flip yourself. This is just yeah. my, this is how you avoid being Bernie Madoff, as I like to say. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, even if you join the fund, it's like listen to one of my videos, listen to my Naked Notes podcast, attend some sort of education with us, and we'll be, we'll be giving that to our investors so they know. Because realistically, everyone's human. Steve's human. Yeah. I'm human, and at the end of the day, we structure this as a fund to protect you from our human <laughs> That's right. flaws. But with that said, at any point, if you know what we are buying and the nuances of that underlying product, you can be one of those first investors to say, hey, Jasmine, I want to give you a call. Steve, I want to give you a call. Something doesn't smell right. Can I talk to you about this? Because that's what's important. And if you have that experience, then you can get in and even sometimes help if that's needed with the investment that needs it to go down. That's right. And with that, we got to wrap our show up. Thank you very much, Jasmine Wilwaf, for being on today and sharing your information. 855-541-6683. 855-541-6683 if you want to call her or APPTS at noteassistanceprogram.com. APPTS at noteassistanceprogram.com. Jasmine Willlaw, thank you for your information on notes. This is Building Solid Foundations. We'll be here every week with you on KCAA Radio. And until I see you next time, go do something different. The Legacy. Southern California.